Commission. Um, so I will read the formal, so I have my laptop here, which has my notes and all that on it, FYI, if I'm looking off screen. Um, so pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, this meeting of the Amherst Public Art Commission is being conducted via remote participation. Uh, so I should do roll call to make sure we're all here. So uh, James Barnhill, Jim Barnhill. Jim Barnhill is here. Alan Kiter. Here. Amy Crawley. Here. Uh, Shona King. Here. And Bill Kazin, acting chair. Um, okay, so I'm calling the meeting to order. And I want to also remind people who are dialing in by phone to press uh, star nine to raise their hand to speak during the public comment portion of the meeting, which will come at the very end of our meeting. I don't currently see any members of the public, but um, some may join us. Um, if people are using a computer or a tablet, they should click on the raise hand button at the bottom of their screen during public comment to let me know that they want to speak. And uh, we're a small group, so typically we would encourage people to keep their, um, their mute on when they're not speaking um, and then raise their hand to talk so that they're not talking over each other, but I don't think that will be a problem. If it is a problem, I will um, recommend that, but I think we'll probably be okay. Uh, I think that's all the formal wording I need. Is that correct, Angela? That is correct, and I've made you co-host, so I'm wishing you a great meeting, and okay. I will depart. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, so I am going to, let me full screen myself here, and just sort of work down the agenda. So I put chair report and treasurer's report at the end. Um, I just figured we'd jump into it. You know, I'm hoping this doesn't go certainly two hours. Maybe we can keep it to an hour or less. Um, so Electrify Amherst was the first thing on our agenda. And Amy and I, uh, particularly Amy, but with my assistance, have been working diligently to try to continue that during our time off. Um, I know you guys are amazing. <laughs> well, you were able to keep that all together. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank Amy. Um, <laughs> she, you know, Amy, yeah. Amy is astounding. Yes, she's a superhero of art. She, she is. So let's <laughs> let's give her. <laughs> thank um, you. <laughs> so I will um, give you my two cents on where we're at, and then let Amy take over. Basically, we. You know, we got the money from the cultural uh, cultural council, and um, it was in place. So I figured, why shouldn't we go ahead? Um, we did get the okay from Paul to go ahead, and um, we we chose the boxes, which were the ones that we had all um, pretty much decided on, um, and we put out the call. And now we're waiting to hear back. We've only heard from one person so far. And I think Amy and I are both a little bit concerned that we're not gonna get a great response given how much outdoor public art has suddenly emerged in town and sort of across the area. That'll be something to discuss now, maybe again later when we talk about our relationship with some of the other organizations in town like the BID. Um, but Amy, do you, I'm sure you have more to add. <laughs> So I, what I was just going to add, um, as Bill said, um, we got the okay from Paul. We've been keeping the DPW updated and as to which boxes. Uh, so the boxes are uh, 116 in West Pomeroy near Mission Cantina, um, Southeast Street and College Street, uh, Florence Bank side, and Main Street and Dickinson. There's the new box, new Ur box next to the original Emily box that is uh, non-active. Um, so we have those three, as Bill said, uh, we've been publicizing it. It's been in the paper, Valley Arts newsletter, uh, BID's putting it in their newsletter. It's on Facebook and Instagram. Deadline for applications is Saturday, August 1st, and we have at this time only received one application. So something we will need to discuss 
um, going forward if we do not receive adequate, if we don't receive enough applications to, to make it viable. Um, the Cultural Council is allowing changes to be made to any grants that were received this year. So that change just needs to be documented and um, sent in by October. If we wanted, if in, I'll say worst case scenario, we don't receive enough applications, we decide to uh, postpone the event until next year, then I just need to submit to the Cultural Council by October a change in our plans. Um, and if we were to do that, maybe we opt for the spring as opposed to waiting until September 2021. That might be, a, might give us some different results. So that's really where we're at right now with the, the box project. Questions, uh, comments? Well, I guess I would add, one thing I would add is that we did reach out to the, so at Paul Bachelman's request, who quite likes the um, mm. mural that's on the box in front of Hope and Feathers, that area, uh, the old one, we reached out to the original artist to see if she would be mm. willing to come back and repaint it on the adjacent new electrical box, um, but have gotten no response from her. So we made a good faith attempt. Um, I might try to send her another email, um, but then if she doesn't respond, then it's, I think it's open season for whoever does want it. Any other mm -hmm. thoughts or questions from? Oh, uh, well, I was thinking um, I could contact um, Anne Tweedy and get the contact information of the people who did the murals on the barriers in town. And we could actively uh, recruit and invite them to submit proposals for doing an electrical box. Do we know? You know maybe it's gotten in? them warmed up and, and excited to maybe, you know, do something a little more permanent. Do we know why we're getting so little interest? I don't know because I've been seeing the promotion everywhere. It's definitely accessible. It's out there. Isn't it typical um, that we get, we receive most of our applications at the last minute? Um, that has been consistent the last couple of years. We had also in the last two uh, years extended the original deadline um, but this year is unique in that we're, we're working with a much shorter time frame um, as far as yeah. you know with, with the deadline and if you had to extend it and jury it and get certificates to them so every, everything's been compressed um, what Bill had mentioned uh, initially, be, with the pandemic, many towns have initiated public art uh, projects. Oh. And so Ware has done something, Springfield has done something, Northampton has done something. Um, so I'm not sure if, if there's just been a saturation point because everybody took the outdoors as an opportunity. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we, we have a, a couple of more weeks before we have to make a decision either way. Um, I think it, I'm open to uh, Shona's suggestion. Um, I have some hesitations about that, or at least I think we should discuss a little. Sure. Yes. Which is to say, I think we could extend an invitation to people with no guarantees. Um, Oh yeah, definitely. It's like a, it's like being invited to an audition of any sort. You know, it's like you're not gonna necessarily automatically get it, but you're but actively recruiting people to to like try out for it. You know. Yeah, I mean, I was just concerned with the quality of some of the work that was done under mm -hmm. the auspices mm -hmm. of the bid in town currently, <laughs> and I don't think that. Um, all of the artists who are participating in that would, would necessarily be uh, at the, you know, at the, at the level we want them to be, but it's, but who knows, because they could, they could, they could send us something that's, that's 
fantastic and really works for our needs. So yeah. yeah. Oh, well, plus the um, the time frame for those barriers was only three hours. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah. So that so, that explains some of it. <laughs> yeah, it does. And you know, we have a lot bigger time to work on the uh, our electrical boxes. So it's yeah. you can have much more like involved right. pieces. Okay. Which well, we I make it when recruiting those people, I think that would be like a good, um, you know, angle too. <laughs> I, I, I would say it could be presented as this opportunity is, is available if you would like to apply for consideration. Yeah. And, you know, then it just puts it back on them if they want to. Sure. And we're also doing everything digitally. We're not accepting any paper applications so people have to be comfortable um, filling in the application online and uploading a um, an ex example of what they want to paint. Shona? Yep. Did you work on the Jersey Barrier painting project? Yes. You did? Yes. Okay. So and that might as well just give us a quick two cents on how that went or what that what what the thinking was behind that. That would be helpful maybe. Um, well, I, I got like recruited into it like less than 24 hours because I was supposed to do like videography for it and I was like all prepared and had the time squared away for that. But then Anne was like, could you actually do a mural? And I was like, well, okay. Hmm. Which, and, which, which, wait, which one was yours? Uh, the lemons. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, like the, I, I quite like the lemons. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I wanted to go with the food theme since it's uh -huh. like for restaurants, you know? Yeah. Um, so I cracked that out in three hours. <laughs> so, but, well, okay. All right. Well, we can come back to this. Um, okay. So I think, do you, so do you, since you were directly involved, want to reach out to Anne or should I reach out to Anne as chair? Um, I can do it because we've already been talking a lot about the, uh, the barriers. Okay. So I, I yeah. think um, I already have that discussion open with her. So it might it actually it might be worth you and I just having a one-on-one a -on -one, um, about that at some point and I could work with you on that okay. um, just to because I'm also as, oh, a, like as wording and whatnot for the yeah yeah okay. and I I sit on the cultural district um, board as the chair of the public art commission so Anne is the you know the chair of that and also on the bid so there's a lot of interaction there synergy yeah, potentially or, or you know um i just had a quick question about um paul's request yeah uh so my understanding is the box that is currently painted will event is no longer in service will eventually be dismantled so he's asking for the artist to recreate it on one of the boxes we selected so that would not be necessarily a juried box he reached out to he said to us several times to amy and myself how much he loves that mural and wants to see it preserved you know or redone so amy and i just said well let's give that artist sort of right of first refusal to that adjacent okay. box um we didn't really discuss i i had said to paul well will the town pay for it um and he didn't respond so and we didn't it's no we didn't push um, to say, well, we had three planned for members of the general public, and this takes our three and makes it two. Uh, we could reopen that conversation potentially if she were to come back and say okay. she wanted to do it. But for the moment, and because there are other boxes in town, so let's say we had an abundance of artists who wanted to paint them, um, you know, we could possibly say, Paul, look, we have th three artists who've submitted. Um, could you give kick in money and we'll do this box that you like as a fourth sure. instead, of, instead of expending our yeah. uh, grant funds. And the, the artist is local still? I mean, we know who he or she is. She's uh -huh. uh, Cambridge, yeah. I think she's in, or we, as far as we know, oh. Amy had a connection through Facebook. So okay. a tenuous one, so. <laughs> we do what we can. Any other questions <laughs> about Electrify Amherst? Should we move on? Town Hall Gallery is the next thing oh. on our agenda. Amy, I don't think yeah. there's much to report there. <laughs> well, I, um, I'll give you where we're at. 
Um, so as we know, Town Hall is closed. I reached out to all of the artists for the upcoming season to let them know that uh, we're kind of in a holding pattern. Um, so what I have offered is to have a digital exhibit of their work. So right now our July, August artist, um, I put together, uh, she sent me 10 images. I put that up into a video um, that's on our Facebook page. And I post one image each Monday of her work. So it'll go through the next several weeks. Brianna um, put the video on our exhibiting artist page on the town website. So that is there with Jamie's statement. And that's pretty much how I'm proceeding at, at this time. Um, I've had inquired at town hall when there might be an opening to the public. Uh, September was mentioned and I know every, all of that's in flux, but that's no guarantee that we would still be able to have an artist in there hanging art um, and or uh, receptions being allowed. So I think what comes next for discussion is if the um, if we shift everybody to 2021, um, which is what some other uh, galleries in town are doing, um, say like the, the library, where if you were to show in July, August this year, but you can't get in the building, you'd, they'd have the option for doing July, August in 2021. Um, so there, there's a lot of moving parts because, because we don't have answers to, to different things. I can say none of the artists have come back to me to say I'm no longer interested. And so there hasn't been any um, upset that I'm aware of, of somebody saying, oh, I couldn't have my exhibit and I don't want to do it. Um, I would like to reach out to Sharon Sherry regarding our little mail slot over at the library because we also haven't been able to go there if there's any checks <laughs> or anything sitting in there um, yeah, true. And, and, and how we might get anything that's in that mailbox as well. Um, so I'd right. say, you know, everybody's, everybody's, you know, seems to be okay with what we're presenting um, because we're all kind of going through this at the same time. So it I seems mean, to, sorry, go ahead, Ellen. Oh, I was going to say one advantage of um, pushing all the artists to 2021 is that Amy, I know you and I are, event, I think we're cycling off mm -hmm. um, the commission. Um, mm -hmm. So that would buy either the existing commission members or new people um, some more time to rethink or yes. you know, plan for the future. Yes, yes. Well, I, uh, I will say, uh, I, just to that point, sorry, mm -hmm. I don't think that you will be, actually, I think Shona, you sent me an email asking, I don't think anybody's going to be pushed off. Um, uh, I think they'll extend your time to some, I haven't heard official word yet, but I suspect okay. because of COVID, your time will be extended at least six months or something. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get, I'll get final word on that. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I was just going to add that uh, Arts Night Plus has been doing virtual art walks on the first Thursday. So any of our artists have also been invited to participate in that, which is they either submit a video, it could be a demo, they put their own video together of their artwork, um, or like the one that I put together for Jamie. Um, so they have that option as well. So there, there's some options there for them to get their art out to the public, such as it is right now. So I think to me, from what um, Amy said, it seems like a little bit like Electrify Amherst, we have to wait a few few weeks, if not a month before mm -hmm. we can sort of regroup and, and, and make a decision about this. Right. Depends almost entirely on um, town halls reopening and yes. what the town manager wants to do. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Anything else about that? No. Okay. So percent for art. Um, yeah. Well, there's not a lot to say there. Really not a lot to say, except that uh, 
<laughs> after all of the hard work and many years of yeah. um, engagement and uh, really the whole reason I joined the Public Art Commission was to was not to redraft the percent for art bylaw in fact but was to actually work on executing it uh, doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon uh, in fact I don't think it's going to happen at all maybe mm -hmm. someday in a year or two when the council is we'll have to be a new batch of counselors um, if somebody wants to take it up again uh, could come back but I, I do not think um, it will get even a hearing in front of the council let alone come to a vote I think the um, council president is she does not want to see new new potential legislation come up before the council that um, it's just going to get rejected out of hand because it's a waste of everybody's time which i agree so it's very uh disappointing to me and probably to all of you and um, it's causing me to rethink many ways my engagement with the public art commission and with art in town and, and where i want to go with that but i haven't made any big decisions so i don't know any thoughts feelings well, yeah ellen um, Bill, could you, um, is it because of the pandemic and the, the council being overwhelmed with all sorts of new decisions that it won't come before, before them? Well, I think it's, yeah, it's because it's financial, yeah. right? So the way we drafted it, they could have put it on the, so we were literally one council meeting away from getting this thing on the books and they could have put it on the books and we drafted it so they could have then turned it off and at least it would have been on the books for the future but it didn't it, we were we were one meeting away i think uh -huh. and, and we had the votes i was pretty sure i thought it would happen i was you know we went we compromised a lot and we really worked hard and you know jim was really instrumental in it um kathy shane counselors kathy and steve schreiber and a number of the counselors in a lot of different ways were very supportive in the end um even you know andy steinberg um so it was it's been very frustrated. Well, I mean, I understand that's what happens, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just twice to have our timing be so bad. <laughs> I know, right? Like, change, what's change of government and now the pandemic, like just unreal. Yes. So this leads to a bigger question that we want to ask ourselves and think about moving forward. I think and today is not the time to have a deep discussion about it, but um, that was going to be an engine for creating a kind of revenue stream for the commission and a way of us mm. developing pretty ambitious projects and um, sinking our teeth into making a real significant artistic contribution to town. Um, without that, what do we as a commission want to do and what do we want to work on and where do we see ourselves? Um, I do have some thoughts and I don't think we should get into that now, but maybe that's a good topic for our next meeting is to really have a conversation of, uh, about that. Okay. Anything else about percent for art? No, okay. So poetry windows. Now this actually is the one potential, um, well, anyway, it's an interesting project I think we could um, dig into. And we talked about this at our last meeting, which is what to do with the poetry windows in Boltwood. And um, Jim and I have spent some time on this and Jim really uh, dug into the contract. We were eventually able to dig up the actual final contract that the town mm. wrote between the artist, which Jim has. <laughs> um, and I think where it leaves us, and I'll let Jim take over in a second, but I think where we are is we have two options and Jim can say whether or not and which one he thinks is best. Um, but one is to go back to the original artist and um, ask them to restore the project to its original state or as, 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 as close to it as we can get um, and maybe even make it better using uh, current technology. And the other is to ask the artist to relinquish her rights to that space and that project, giving it back to the town and then turn it into a space where we could, I mean, I'm imagining that the Public Art Commission would curate it uh, on a rotating basis and um, have different artists come in and do installations in that space, which to my mind could be a pretty cool, exciting thing um, for us and future Public Art Commission members to work on. Uh, but people do like the poetry windows quite a lot. And we may in fact be absolutely beholden to the contract 
to go back to the artist and try to restore it. I will say that in the end, none of this is our decision anyway. All we would do is make a recommendation because we answer to the council. The council is our appointing authority and um, whatever we want is in the end in their hands. And of course the town manager always has an opinion one way or the other about all this stuff and has a lot of um, power. So I think what we should try to do is um, decide as a commission what we think the best course of action is and then I will draft a proposal and send it to the manager, the town manager and the council and see if, particularly in light of the fact that percent for art is dead, we can't get at least some kind of hearing or action on this so that I could say I've accomplished something in my, <laughs> in my time on the Public Art Commission. Jim, do you want to? Um, okay, so with regard to the contract, I need to tell you about the man that uh, went into a large law firm and asked for a lawyer that was only had one arm. Have you heard this? And so he went up and the lawyer said, why in the world do you want me? Because I only have my right arm. I lost the other in the ward. The well, client said, well, I get so sick of these lawyers who say on the one hand, but then on the other hand. <laughs> and with this contract, this is a classic application of that because I have never in my career, which is 50 years long, seen so, a contract so ambiguous. <laughs> but the uh, nice thing about it is on repairs and restoration, that is one instance where it is not. And the, the, uh, if we want to alter the work of the site or repair it, we do have to talk to the artist. So that's reasonably clear. So we can go ask the artist. And if that's what we want to do, I prefer to go talk to the artist about anything we do because the contract is too ambiguous. I, will, I, I can't possibly put my lawyer's opinion behind anything. So uh, it'd be, you can resolve it by getting the artist to agree to whatever you want to do. So that would be my, that's, that's what I would want to do. So that, that makes things fairly simple. <clears throat> which is we go to the artist one way or the other. Yeah. Now what the question is what do we ask the artist? Do we ask the artist to restore it or you know to whatever degree the contract states and whatever degree the town is willing to you know have money and etc. Or do we go back to the artist and say will you let us out of the contract so that we can do something else with the space? Well, let me tell you what it says about repairs and restoration first so you'll know. It says uh, we get to decide if and when repairs and restorations will be made. So that part's pretty clear. And it says that we do routine repair restoration. Well, I, I don't have an idea what routine restoration means. And then it says during the artist's lifetime, the artist may make or personally supervise significant repairs and restorations. I don't know what that means either. Uh, and be paid a reasonable fee. So the things that you can take out of this are, oh, it does have a definition of significant repairs. It affects the poetic content and so forth. So basically you got to treat it as significant repair, I think, and the artist is going to want to get paid. So that's a takeaway. So if we want to restore it, we got to have a budget for the artist plus a budget for the restoration in pretty bad shape. I think we can all agree, right? You all agree with that? So the other, and I don't know what the artist would say. I mean, if the artist is all up in arms about not restoring it, that would be one situation. The artist says, I'm not interested anymore. It's another. Uh, if the artist, it might be simpler to start over. I, you know, we might get a, one step would be get an estimate for what it would cost to restore it. So we'd know if we're interested in that possibility and then decide whether we want to talk the artist into forgetting about it or talk the artist into putting it back. Comments, questions, thoughts? Um, I do recall the artist uh, made contact with the commission within, I guess, the last five years. I'd have to go back into the minutes to find out. Um, I can't remember where that conversation, what it led to. Yeah, as I, I, I have the documentation on that. Um, and I believe Eric had reached out to her and, and, and according to some of the, some of the recount, the, this, the um, recollections, and I, again, I have to double check, somebody on her behalf came and looked at what was there 
Um, so we, we could get in touch with her. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Um, but that in a way is, is kind of water under the bridge. I guess we should just make sure we have our ducks in a row when we do get back in touch with her. Um, although I can always plead, I'm the new chair, so I wasn't around then. Um, but I think the question before us is, um, on principle, I guess, um, what is our relationship to the artworks under the stewardship of the town and our relationship with the artists who have created these artworks and, um, and also the potential for the town to do what's most appropriate for the town with these, with these works or the spaces they- Can they I make up. a point to that, to that framing of the issue because if you're framing that issue in that way for this particular work, yep. the relationship of the town and the artist is set forth in this uh, contract. So to the extent that you can figure out what it means, that's what governs. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a very artist favorable contract. And then what the contract does not take into account apparently is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and the Visual Artist Act, which gives the visual artists extensive rights which were not waived. And those include rights to prevent modifications under certain circumstances and so forth. So whatever we do, I would love to have the artist's signature on the piece of paper. Okay. And that resolves it all. Um, I can say I've never seen the piece op in operation. Um, mm -hmm. It's never worked as long as I've lived here. So it, it's... Um, How long is that? Five years. I think I've been here seven. I haven't seen it work. Yeah, I remember it working ages ago when it was like brand new, but I feel like it stopped working pretty fast. Mm -hmm. It stopped working within as soon as the weather got cold. Oh wow. And then they reinstalled it later using iPads and then it was working again for a brief period of time and then it also stopped. So it's it's just been there was the initial yeah. install which was apparently a kind of a disaster and then a reinstall which also didn't take um so there is some cause for us to say um maybe this wasn't the best idea for public art project. How old is the artist? I don't know. I would guess she's around your age, Jim, but I'm not sure. In that case, she's probably not interested in starting some big long project when she's had two failures on it already. I believe she also lives in Japan. She does? Well, I, so. I wasn't sure about that. It was Because I know she, she was here, you know, in the Boston area at one point. Um, that was our... If she's in Japan, she's supposed to supervise the modification. She can't do it. <laughs> I'd have to look at my... Um look back on the minutes but there was something about maybe she was on sabbatical there or teaching over there but she yeah, was there's definitely something about japan in, yeah. with her i can't remember the specifics mm -hmm. either okay so they were faced with this i love this uh if the artist cannot be reached within 60 days the town shall seek the advice of the public arts commission it does not say what happens with that advice or what rights or if any are conferred by what we say, but at least it's helpful. I mean, you could take the position that we have the ability to say we're going to destroy it if we can't reach the artist, but the contract is highly ambiguous, so we can't really say that. And I'm not putting my signature on a piece of paper about it. Well, I guess for me, from our point of view as a public art commission, what is our goal here? And I think we have two outcomes. One is to have the piece well, three. One is to have the thing sit and look horrible as it's been and doing nothing and just kind of uh, kind of public art failure in town. I hope that doesn't continue to be the case. Two is to have it restored to the artist's original intent as best as she and or we are able. Three is to do something else with it. I vote for something else because it's failed twice. Yeah, now, this, I vote for something else too. If we're voting, I don't know if we're voting, but. Well, <laughs> it's not a vote, but it's a conversation. Having never seen it operate, um, I vote not to continue it. Um, it's obviously a, an ongoing headache and its dependence on technology, which is constantly changing, will probably 
make it a continued headache. Um, so I would love to have that space to be creative and think of some other. Um, I like the idea of something that is changing and doesn't have to be permanent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I think as far as the technology, there was someone who did approach the, the commission a couple years ago with some ideas for uh, some, some other technology so, so it could function. Um, but again, the issue of who uh, covered the cost of that, who's maintaining that was part of the broader discussion. Um, and whether they are, the, the artist wanted that. So um, I, I would agree. I think having something that, that is rotating, um, that gets refreshed every once in a while, um, keeps it interesting. Yeah. yeah. And who knows, maybe it would actually like, you know, make somebody go like, hey, I want to visit Amherst today and see the new thing, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> I mean, my, my vision for that space is that, yeah, it would be a, a rotating gallery, kind of a peephole gallery space. You have an artist or artists come in who want to put things in those windows. It would be curated. It would, you know, through public process by the public art commission or potentially outside people. Um, it would have a new name. We'd have to take out of those bricks, it says mm -hmm. poetry window and give it a new name, peephole gallery or whatever we want. Mm -hmm. uh, and it could, it could have sculpture, you know, because we don't, we can't really display sculpture in, in town hall. It could have flat things that people put in there. I mean, it, there's a lot you could do and people would come up and kind of peek in and could almost have a narrative from one window to the mm -hmm. next, or, you know, mm -hmm. the sky's the limit in a way, depending upon funding and budget. Um, we don't have. Right. So that would be a push we'd have to. Yeah. So that would be part of the conversation. Um, that's my vision for okay. it. Well, here's what I do then, because it seems like unanimously there's no interest in trying to resurrect it. So then the, the, we have the problems that we have to get around is that the rights that are conferred for the artists under the Copyright Act are not waived. And the second is the the rights under the contract for the artists are ambiguous. And in there are two op options for resolving that. The best one and cheapest one is to get the artist to agree to it. So that would be our first step. We should, we should probably prepare something. If we find the artist, prepare it and say, this is why we think it's time has passed. And do you agree with that? Can we, can we relinquish that other way? You know, and then the second is divided into two parts. We can either just do it and hope that she doesn't sue us and uh, she probably won't, I'm guessing, unless she's got some money because it would be a very expensive lawsuit because it would you know, be fraught with appeals. So the second thing we could do is file a declaratory relief action to get the certainty over it, which I am de I'm not particularly recommending because that costs a lot of money too, so those are our options. And okay, I'm sure. Excuse me, but the declaratory relief action would cost far less than if we got to a, a, we destroyed it and we got to a battle over it after. So, as far as those issues, that would absolutely come out in a conversation with the council and the town manager, and I'm sure town council, you know, the, the JP Law will, will have a, an opinion about all this. Yes, which brings me to a point which I'd like to ask: Do we know there's a lawyer signature on that that's un illegible? Do we know who? it said approved as to form. Do we know what lawyer approved it as to form? No. Because um, if it was KP law, then I would anticipate that there might be some defensiveness. Okay. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, well, we don't have to say, I mean, if our intent is to do something else with the piece and the town manager is supportive of that and the town council is supportive of that, then, I mean, I'm sure KP law pretty much finds the answers that the town manager wants them to find, it seems like, so. That's what they're supposed to do, but here's the problem. The problem is how you do it, because if you get the artist's signature, then everybody's happy, there's no problem about anything. If you don't, yeah. now you've got a legal analysis and a quagmire, yeah. and the lawyers not look at this thing, and if it came out of my law firm, I'm, I might be a little embarrassed. 
Okay. Well, also there's that thing in there about the 60 days too. So it's like, if we reach out and we don't hear anything for 60 days, then that's essentially like a forfeiture of her rights. Except on that it. it isn't. It says that <laughs> just could, it doesn't, it, it says we can see, I have to find it, but I remember that it, it the, what it says happens if we can't find her is, is itself very ambiguous. It doesn't mm. clearly say if we cannot find, I think it says we, we seek the approval of the Public Arts, we seek the advice of the Public Arts Commission, but it doesn't say the consequence of going to the Public Arts Commission, nor does it expressly say the Public Arts Commission's decision shall be binding on the artist. Mm -hmm. So it's a, that's what I mean, it's a quagmire because it, it just doesn't complete the thoughts. So- Makes any sense? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll we can have if, if our intent is clear from our point of view as a commission, then um, we can just get the ball rolling and approach. I mean, I could approach in a casual way, uh, Paul and Lynn, and just sort of read the weather there and just say, "This is what we've been talking about." Um, can I write up a formal proposal to this effect? And uh, they'll probably respond. Lynn is very responsive, Paul not usually. Um, and then that would give them something to, you know, I could, I could draft something, send it to all of you to look over. Um, and it would just be an analysis of the facts that I know from the past, where we stand now and where we imagine going with this. Um, yeah, I don't particularly want to get into anything in writing about what I said, but it's no, no, no. really inflammatory. No, not at all. It would simply be, if we're agreed that we'd like to try to do something else with the space, it mm -hmm. would just be a recounting of, this is when it was made, this is the artist's name, um, this is what happened when it didn't work the first time, this is what happened when it didn't work the second time, it's been empty for five years, you know, um, we would like to see something new happen with it, and, uh, you know, well, I don't know. Yeah. Comments, thoughts? Anybody um, else? Yeah, I mean. I support if that, that. If that's what we want to do, we have to get the decision made that that's what we want to do, however we get it made. And then somebody has to write a letter to the artist saying that's what we want to do and does she agree to it? Yeah. And then, well. <clears throat> If she does, get her signature on it. Well, I guess my, my question is, are we ready? I mean, I guess we could take a formal vote as a commission um, and then we could draft a formal letter and that's, we should probably take those steps. Uh, are we ready to do that at this meeting or is it better for me to actually in a preliminary way reach out to the, you know, Lynn and Paul and, and just get some feedback from them before we uh, get to that point? Well, politically, do we need to do that? Because I think it's pretty clear what we want to do, and I think we're pretty clear what we ought to do. You know, so, I mean, politically, is that indicated? And I think we should do it. And if it's not necessary politically, then I'm ready to vote. I feel like going to the town council members that we would be going to with a clear idea of what, um, what we're looking for would be good. You know. So maybe it's better than if I actually try to draft something um, more direct uh, that we all agree on. So, so I think this is okay. So for, for our next meeting, I will have drafted and circulated a letter of intent, uh, you know, our summary letter of the situation and, you know, like I just described. And um, we will have all read it, we'll come with comments and we can vote to approve it. And if we do, then I will send it along. That makes sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Okay. So that then leads to next item of the, on the agenda, um, our relationship to other organizations in town. I put that on there just because I wanted to, um, initiate a conversation about how we interact with 
the bid and the cultural district. And actually this does raise the question of how we interact with the council and the town manager. This is part of a larger conversation, but it was occasioned by COVID and in particular by also by the mural project that the bid had come up with um, that got that she withdrew when the historical commission objected to it. Um, it was that uh, mural that we none of us liked, but we felt we couldn't say no to because it was going on private property. You, you recall it was like the welcome to Amherst and the kids were going to paint it. So when it came up before the historical commission, they really pushed back and said they didn't like it. Uh, it's ugly, and whatever. And so uh, Gabrielle, I think, uh, was <laughs> understandably unhappy or, you know, she and, and ended up withdrawing the project and not doing it. Um, and subsequently has called for the dismantling of the historic commission, actually. So she was really unhappy. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't think I heard about that. <laughs> and there's been some pushback. Actually, Mandy, Mandy, uh, Mandy Johanneke on the council also has um, questioned the role of the historical commission. So there's starting to be some grumblings, uh, which leads me to think, well, the bid is really taking over in a way and has taken over during COVID a lot of what we do, or at least that's um, seems to be Gabrielle's vision, uh, put, push, put creating public art in town in a whole variety of ways. And um, there's potential for collaboration um, and uh, possibly potential for conflict. I'm not sure. So I just wanted to bring this up. You know, we nobody reached out to me about the Jersey barriers and painting the murals on the Jersey barriers, which frankly is probably even more public in a sense than that other piece that was going to go in a private building, since it was a DPW who set up those Jersey barriers and they're actually in the public way. Part of the COVID relief was to actually um, was to allow these things to happen very quickly. And so they didn't want to get a lot of commissions, committees, boards involved. Uh, and they didn't. Are we okay with that? Do we want to complain? Do we, I don't know. I have mixed feelings. I did feelings. feel like we should have been like involved in it in some capacity, but I don't know what our like foot in the door up with that would have been. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think we have two major problems. First of all, we don't have any money. And second of all, we don't have any statutory power. <laughs> Other than that, I say we should get involved. <laughs> I'd, add to, I'd add to that we are all volunteers, whereas the people who work for the bid are not. Right. Yeah. Part of not having power. Mm. So, I mean, I think you try to do anything about it, it's a lost cause, but if somebody can tell me I'm wrong, I'd love it. I would have loved to have, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like we should have more collaborative conversations perhaps with the bid and um, you know Gabrielle obviously um, supports public art and um, you know I don't know what happened to the footprints project I assume that got put on hold with the pandemic but um, you know she seems really gung-ho about that and um, yeah I, I drove by um, that Saturday morning when they were painting all the Jersey barriers and I was like, oh, wow, this is cool, but I didn't know about it. So right. I, I, I think it was more, um, yeah, I, I guess I would want to take a stance of collabor collaboration, not conflict, but somehow to have a more open line of communication between our two groups to mm -hmm. just be aware of what's each other is doing or thinking about or planning and how can, you know, if they do have a budget, you know, how can we support them then in, in some of these yeah. What do we have to offer, you know, if we have say, let's collaborate, what do we have to offer them? <laughs> I don't know, yeah. our expertise, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and my, my understanding with the barriers, um, I mean, Anne, both Gab Gabrielle and Anne reached out to me, uh, one, to ask if I wanted to paint something, um, and two, you know, do you have any artists you think might be interested? Um, I think it was after that that I, this may, this may have been in the Gazette, but that the money for that came out of a grant or, or some 
funding that the town or that the BID had received. Um, yeah, state money. yeah that, that downtown foundation thing. No, it, 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 I don't think it was through that. Oh, I saw that. It, um, it was I mean, state, th state money. There, there's been a lot of money oh. coming, coming to, uh, to the organization. So um, I think they took a, a portion of whatever money was received. And um, after, you know, Northampton had their public art weekend and people were out painting and then it was, oh, hearts are getting now, you know, painted too. Um, I, I don't know if, because we haven't been meeting regularly, um, if that had any impact on the uh, oh, reaching yeah, yeah. out to us, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it's all speculation. I, I, I can't say what was in their thinking process. I, I, I uh, thought it was interesting when you said, Bill, that the the money comes in and and they, you know, the organization wants to move through it quickly. So how, how is the fast, what's the fastest way to get the money dispersed once it's received? So. Um, I would just point out that like the, uh, I, I, I find problematic the, I can't breathe mural in front of, um, is that in front of Bistro 63 or something? The message mm -hmm. that it sends when people are sort of going out to eat is confusing, oh, I it's confusing to me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't believe anything was juried or very heavily juried. Right. Um, I, I am aware that in, in talking with Gabrielle, um, one person did submit something, and it may have been one of one of the Amherst High School students. Um, but it was, I guess, it was very elaborate, and she was like, "Okay, but you've only got three hours, so you need to you know, kind of." Uh, reduce whatever that that was um so i think it kind of it as shona said it, it came together very quickly um but is that what we want for public uh, art in amherst <laughs> i'm not sure um anyway i don't know that we have to spend a lot of time on this it's just something for us to be aware of and for us to think about as we think about our charge and our mission and where we see ourselves as a body going uh, in the future. I don't want to step on people's toes either, and I don't want to quash organizations that are doing things in town. Um, I want to collaborate. I want to see great things come out of it. Uh, yeah. Other... I, 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 Go ahead. I, I was just saying, I, I think it's been a topic of discussion over time because Many of our organizations from Arts Night, Cultural District, BID, um, the Cultural Council, um, all have a lot of the I was you know same same ideas, same intents, but we're still still we're still siloed. We've seen some breakthrough of that, and some some collaboration, some crossover, but the silos are still there. Mm -hmm. And Sorry. and I don't know what what the easy answer is to um yeah change that <laughs> stretch my legs mm -hmm. okay i just wanted to stretch my legs so it's been an hour um i think we can wrap up um, unless there's anybody anybody wants to say anything else about that topic um i have no chair report i've pretty much shared my two cents with you um shona i don't know if you have a treasurer's report i understand oh yeah i do um oh. we have one thousand two hundred and two dollars and fifty two cents okay as of um like a couple days ago great mm -hmm. um i mean that does lead me to think a little bit about how how we might want to spend that money that's another thing to think i mean it's like some of these town bodies and commissions have absolutely zero so we're lucky to have that much even though it's a small amount and uh so that might be again for our next meeting um, something to to ponder. Uh, I'll put that on the agenda, I guess. Um, any other business? You want to set a date for the next meeting? Oh, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe maybe um, try to do it 
slightly sooner rather than later, depending upon what people's schedules are like, um, just because we have some stuff I it'd be good to get moving on since we haven't met for a super long period of time. How does, um, well, it's almost a month away. I mean, the next meeting, I guess, would be like August 13th. Actually, I have to double. I need to double check that date because I actually have a week away book that I don't see in my calendar. Um, but are other people available then? I am. I am. I am. Everybody but Ellen. Okay. Um, Ellen, I'm what is for, Yeah, I'm supposed to be away for two weeks, the week of the 10th and the 17th. The week of the 10th. So that's sort of right in the middle of the month. Mm. Mm -hmm. 17th. I mean, we could conceivably try to meet again in two weeks on the 30th and just get this um, issue of the uh, poetry windows hammered out and s voted on and signed off on and sort of have a conversation about how we want to spend our thousand dollars and kind of regroup, see where we're at. Although that's before the deadline. Maybe we should, you know, I think we should meet after the September 1st deadline for the um, electrify Amherst and the August first. August first. I'm sorry, August first. I'll be camping on Thursday the sixth, but I could potentially do Tuesday, August fourth. Are people? I can. Yes. Um. Yes. At twelve. Yeah. Okay. That should work. Or August first at noon. Fourth. 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 Or Monday, oh, might, okay. or Mon Monday might even be better, the third. Um, but to, so, so let's tentatively say the fourth at noon. Okay. Monday is better for me. If oh, okay. Cares. I, I can do Monday. <laughs> Monday works. Okay. okay. Is that better? Okay, thank you. Monday's better. Okay, that's great. Better for me, for sure. Okay. Okay, so the third. That's the third. Yeah, and you'll get, if, if, assuming I can book it, you'll get, um, you know, the same kind of email. This actually worked pretty well, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I'll, let me just make a note for myself. On the agenda for that meeting, and I'll have to circulate beforehand, will be the um, letter re poetry. Uh, we'll electrify. And how to spend how to spend our thousand dollars? <laughs> Big party. I mean, frankly, <laughs> uh, what, one question would be: Do we want to use it to repair the com you know the conversation piece, uh, poetic dialogue piece? Um, oh yeah. Not that I think our budget should be covering that, but <laughs> if we say in good faith, we'll, we we will cover it. This is a hey, COVID. Everybody, you know, we're strapped for cash. Look, we have a little bit of money. We're going to pay for it. I Are mean, we I think it was, about the poetry windows again. No, no, no. The uh, poetic no. dialogue piece oh, that the sorry. CPAC rejected oh. our oh. request for paint last year. Um, the, anyway, for next know, for next the meeting. Cultural, the culture commission. I have a feeling you can get some money if you ask. Oh yeah. And I yeah. think the deadline for applying is not over. Okay. I might just well, reach I'm out to you. I'm very sure you'll get money if you're asked. I, I might. Okay. Anyway. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. That's it. Bye. Bye. Bye.